This episode is brought to you by the Shop One in Five Pledge and Small Business Shopping Directory. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. So head to shop one in five.com to take the pledge. And friend, while you are there, check out and shop from hundreds of small businesses in the Small Business Shopping Directory. It's the go to directory to discover, support, and shop small businesses all in one place. Head to shop one in five.com. Welcome to the Product Boss Podcast, where we help product based businesses grow their sales and improve their strategies. Hey, everyone. I want to introduce you to my co host and biz bestie, Mina Kunlo Sitap, an Amazon guru that has built a multi six figure product based business. In introducing the other half of the product boss, Jacqueline Snyder. She has helped launch and grow over 500 fashion apparel and accessory brands, even one of her own. And together, we share our inventory of secret weapons that will help you dig deep and do the work it takes. Are you ready? Let's build together. Hey, product bosses. Did you know that every Wednesday, we have a live talk show called Bosses and Breakfast, where we chat business, mindset, mom life, and everything in between. It's a really fun time and it feels like a conversation amongst friends. In fact, sometimes we have conversations that we don't necessarily know that they're going to lead to where they lead, but we get such an amazing reaction from our listeners and from our community and from our students that we actually wanted to bring it to you to hear today. Yes. Our favorite thing about Bosses and Breakfast is that we get to get together We get to laugh, we get to be inspired about what's happening, and we get to check in with you and re-motivate you on why you're working so hard. So join us next time. We'd love to see you there. And here's that snippet from one of our shows that got tons of positive response, where we all walked away feeling more inspired and motivated for the week. So let's jump in. This is something... That happens every time something big happens, I feel like. So what do you I mean really, by big? So I, I came up with this topic because I feel like people go into this mode when they are on the edge of uncertainty and feeling like there's some big decision or course that they have to take, path that they have to take, that they're scared or unsure of. And those are the two buckets. They go into fear or comparison or both, right? And so it's kind of the default for a lot of us because it's, you know, fight, flight, or fix a lot of times, right? Because we're like, okay, I know that I want to do this thing. I'm unsure of making this big, bold thing in my life that feels big to me. And then I I think it's called like lizard brain in psychology. You have what's called a lizard brain that makes you protect itself, Right. So I'm really digging deep into my psychology minor here, like my... Oh, also minor in psychology. What else? (laughs) What other things do you want to tell us about Well, anyways, let me brush that off. So you go into this uh, defense mechanism of um, your lizard brain, right? You basically take off. So what happens is that when you need to make a big decision, you get really scared. So that's the fear part that comes in, right? Your lizard brain, your, 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 um, I'm trying to find the lizard that we used to have on our desk. (laughs) You're made to survive essentially, Mm -hmm. you know, like your DNA is, is, is you're created to survive. So you either go into that, but what I'm seeing a lot of because of society and because of social media and because of technology is that there's another layer to that. So we see this a lot in our masterminders. We see this a lot in our students is that the fear is added onto with comparison and the comparison will stop you as much as the fear will, right? So it's it's usually one or the other or both. Okay. So for example, sometimes people, they call it like fear of success, right? Anyone here feel a fear of success? Mm-hmm. Cause there's fear so, of like fear of things feeling dangerous. And there's a fear mm-hmm. of doing something well. working, but yeah. I think altogether, that's something more new that people define as fear of success. Because like, if we back it up a little, like what you, you basically have to define what success means to you. So if you're having to make a decision and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. 
what if I were to make this, you know, decision and hire on this team member and I was successful and it outgrew me and, and oh my gosh, what would I do? But you don't realize is that the first step that you need to do is that you need to define what success was to you in the first place. So if you didn't want that, but you already defined, okay, I don't want this booming, I don't want this business that outgrows me with a giant team and, you know, I'm locked, chained to my desk at all times or to my craft table or to, you know, my production, um, uh, uh, warehouse, then you've already defined that for yourself. And the uncertainty is replaced with a bit more certainty, you know? So I guess what I'm coming to is that that's where we usually go with fear is that normally that's where that starts. There's the fear because it's just you making a decision. But what's happening is that we get so clouded in our thoughts because we start comparing. And we're like, well, this person is already doing this, or this person has this, or this person is, I don't know, like received this or is, is already at this stage, you know, like they have this revenue or they have this amount of team members. And then it makes it really, really hard because your brain can't function on, okay, I need to compare myself to this, but I need to make this decision for myself. And you just get so lost in it that you just stop altogether. The fear and the comparison stop you altogether. So does that make sense? Yeah. And a lot of people are saying, um, I think it's going to two places, right? Somebody's like fear of success, which is rooted in fear of failure, yeah. um, fear of being overwhelmed. And I think exactly what you're saying, fear of being I was judged. Mm-hmm. Fear of, yeah, and not working and what will other people think of me in a way, right? Um, mm-hmm. Fear of letting yourself down, fear of all the things. Fear, uh, Cass says, fear of growing too fast and not being able to keep up. I have a full-time job that I love and I don't want to give up nor give up more time with my family, right? Let me tell you that this happens on every level, okay? Mm-hmm. So no matter where you are, if you're in startup, you're at $100,000, you're at a million dollars, you're at $15 million, like whatever your number is, it happens at every level because it's an unknown. Um, I like to reference this back to having children for those of you who have children. Or listen, we've had anxiety when we've gotten our first pet, right? Or bought mm-hmm. your first home or like all of a sudden you're like a plant mom and you have to take care of plants. You, you like... <laughs> I'm serious. So that's, someone asked yeah. me of a fiddle leaf behind you. And I was like, she probably has no idea what kind of plant that is behind you. Oh, it is. It is, it it is, is. a fiddle leaf, okay. but it's fake. It's from right. World Market. So you don't have to take care of it. <laughs> so the thing I know about myself is that I don't have the bandwidth to take care of a plant that needs a lot of, that needs a lot from me. That you needs know. anything. <laughs> yeah, that needs anything. <laughs> Water, whatever. You know, sunshine. Sunlight. Nope. Nope. Dirt. Oh, I don't know. I think you might be able to, you so, know. So I know when I first got our dog, I've had dogs my entire life. And when we, our dog had passed away, we took a year off and we got our dog. And I remember going like, what, what did I just do? Right. I have two kids. What did I do? This dog is going to be around with us like for 15 to 17 years. My kids are going to be out of the house and I have this dog, right? Uh-huh. This is like my anxiety that spiked because things look different. My kids were going to school, you know, things just felt different. So I want you to just think about life in general or like children. We, we've never been parents to kids of our kids age before, because if they're your, you know, your oldest is the first time you've been a parent to a kid of that age. So when we have our children and you have a new baby, you're like, okay, now I have to take care of this baby. Right. And you have fear of the baby dying, not knowing what to do. Oh my gosh. So many things. I think for that, you, you, we have our own fears, but there's other people's fears too. Right. you know, but I'm just like, trying to say is like, I, th- I think a lot of this stems from the unknown for people. Yeah. So I think I want you to just think about something in your life that you've approached that you didn't know what you were doing, which for me, sometimes I can reference. You have accountability or responsibility for it. Like kids, And comparison. Business. My yeah. parents parented like this. Oh, this mom over on Instagram somehow dresses all her children the same and homeschools mm-hmm. them and looks like she's living her best life, right? When you compare to people and then you have this fear of it. So 
So I want you all to just find something in your life that you can relate to that you're like, oh, that's kind of silly. Like you've seen yourself Mm -hmm. overcome it because when you think about business, it's the same thing where you just don't know. Like maybe you've never had a business that's made $50,000, $100,000, a quarter of a million dollars, a million dollars before. And you want that, but you're not sure what it's going to take to get there. And like Nina said, a lot of times it's because we're comparing and we're looking on the outside of what other people are doing and thinking, oh, they've got it figured out. Yeah. Right. For sure. And I think the very first part of it is it's because the uncertainty, you're so overwhelmed by it. But the the thing that you need to start doing is you just need to start doing. Do Clarity comes from doing. And I think that that's when people start to understand, okay, I like this or I don't like this. You know, and then as far as like fear of success, you know, there's Jack and I will talk about like 100,000, 500,000, a million, all that stuff. But sometimes fear of success to a lot of people is I want to have a vacation every uh, year for my family, or I want to make enough money. I want to make a thousand dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month, right? So you have to define what that idea of success is to you because then it's not like very rarely will you be like, oh my gosh, I have a million dollar business and I only wanted one to two thousand dollars a month, you know, or that you're it doesn't jump that far. So along the way, there's this intuition, this gut that you're like, this feels wrong to me. This doesn't feel aligned but it comes from doing the things, pivoting, but you have to have a target. So if you define success as I want to be making $5,000 a month, let's say $5,000 a month. And, but I still, or let's, let's rewind to the example that somebody gave us. She wants her full-time job still, and she doesn't ever want to leave her full-time job. She loves her full-time job. So let's say her goal every month was, I want to make $3,000 a month. And I want to keep my full time job, right? So she's working her way backwards. She, you know, if she hits 3,000, then she doesn't have to even worry about it, you know, but she's still making decisions based off of that. Do I um, invest in this machine? Do I invest in this course? Do I hire this part time person because I can't be here to ship? Do I, you know, hire this um, person to take photos for me because I don't have time to do it? You know, do I pay for this? email tool because I need things to be automated. So you still have to go forth and making decisions, but you know what the end target is and it makes it a lot easier. But what happens is that people start comparing before they understand what they want for themselves. And so it's like, oh my gosh, she, this sounds so great. Jacqueline and Mina are like, I could have a hundred thousand dollar business you know, or $500,000 business. But then you get to that point and you're like, I really want to quit because this turned out to be nothing that I wanted. So, you know, or I would love it instead. (laughs) So Nina and I had this conversation personally yesterday about us. And part of the reason is we're making more money than we've ever made before. Full Mm -hmm. disclosure, we've grown this business. We both have our other businesses. Like this is the best we've ever done financially, which Mm -hmm. is awesome. Which also leads to fear and comparison, right? Like, oh my goodness, our team is growing. Um, You know, is this, are we putting in more to this? But all feels overwhelming. Like the team part for me, for sure. And like, and you know, because her and I used to do this together. Um, Like Mm -hmm. it was like her and I, and then a little bit with like Lauren and a couple other people. But now we're like needing to manage and take on a role of leadership. and, And so, but, but let's jump to our life and lifestyle. So What we've discussed, right? Because as you grow and listen, 2020 was a heck of a year. Like we stepped in and stepped up. You all stepped Mm -hmm. in and stepped up. We did a lot of stuff for other people, including all of you, right? Like providing for your customers online um, because that was a major pivot. But this weekend I was at, as my kids called it, a mansion. Like on Long (laughs) Island, just outside of the Hamptons. Um, These friends are in finance. They own like two apartments that are like connected. They basically own an entire floor in a building on the Upper West Side. They have a lot of money, but they're in finance. So any of you that are from like the city understand the finance people in New York. So I'm at their house. And so I was trying on their lifestyle in my head, right? I was like, okay, like here's their second home. This is what they're very wealthy very wealthy. This is their second home. This is two words. (laughs) Very wealthy. 
<laughs> this is like their children are in everything. Like they have, you know, like so many things, right? But it's my friend and she, I don't know if she's watching right now. So hopefully you're okay with me discussing this, but she mm-hmm. was in marketing. She went to college. She has all this stuff. And like, since she had kids, she kind of took this, this, she's become like a house. She says it a housewife. And she's now that her her youngest is going to school, she's trying to figure out what she can do again. And I was kind of giving her ideas. And I was like, God, I want this big kitchen. And there was things I was trying on, but Amina and I talked about this. We both in our dream homes want a big kitchen, mm-hmm. but you want to know something ironic about that? We don't cook. Like we can cook. <laughs> it's the gathering place. Okay. Yeah. We, we can cook, but we tend to be yeah. on lives during the time that we cook. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, we, we really love to work and we really love owning our own businesses, but I really love food. So I'd love a kitchen for somebody else to cook. <laughs> so you're adding a chef to your dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Why not? But you know, so this idea of like trying on other people's lives, right? Because I think as human nature, and I talked to this, I talked to my life coach about this this weekend, because I was like, oh, I'm in this comparison, right? I'm in this comparison and this chase to get to a point. I mean, this guy owns like the majority of the land and estate here. Like he's like, you know, so for me, like I was like, okay, do I want this life? You know, we've talked mm-hmm. about, sports moms and moms that like spend a lot of time taking their kids to sports or um, doing homework with their kids after school. And we've been trying this on and being like, do we want to end work early to sit down and do homework with our kids? Or is that not the time that we want to spend with our kids? Like we might want to do other things with our children, but maybe that's not the thing that aligns. And that's okay. Some of you are like, yes, I want to homeschool. I want to be with my kids. I want to do that after school. And we're, you know, we're trying different lives and lifestyles on because what's hard is like you can look through a screen and look at other people's lives and and highlight reel and see what they present out to you, but you're not living in their shoes. You're not living in their lives. You're not running businesses that they're running. You're not experiencing all the things. So I think what her and I are working on, and that's why we wanted to bring up fear in comparison with all of you is, is the comparison part. What do we really want? What does, Mm -hmm. what does our ideal life look like? And it can change my friends. You can go through seasons and things can change. So right now a bigger business might be overwhelming to you, but you may just like Mina said, want to hit a certain revenue, want to be able to hit a certain revenue, work a certain amount of hours and pay for something. So doing and defining what that is leads to clarity. Comparison is the opposite of clarity. It's the opposite. You get so clouded in your thoughts because there's something that draws you to something. You Like I actually found like Jacqueline and I both, we loved that house. It was so beautiful. I mean, I'd take the house, not turning it down. Live in it. And is that what you want all your hard work to go to is that version of it, that specific version of it. So I actually, um, for Labor Day, went to go visit my family in Northern Duluth. It was, or Northern Minnesota in Duluth area. So beautiful, you guys. Just like the luscious green lakes, forestry. Like, oh my God, it was just beautiful. They have a farm, they have chickens. They had a neighbor who had cows and the cows, they shared the land. The cows eat the pasture and it keeps their grass down. Anyways, it was a lot. That's why you maybe can't own a farm. You're like, the cows do something with the grass. (laughs) (laughs) And my husband has always like wanted land and my uncle has land. We went to Missouri for Memorial Day weekend. He had 14 acres of land. My cousin, I think maybe it was probably like 10 acres of land. And I've always thought, and you guys have heard me say it, that I wanted a lake house because I grew up in Storm Lake along a lake, right? We lived a block away from it. You know, it was kind of like the houses that were originally there and not like the lavish, you know, Bel Air houses. But we lived closer to a lake and I find like I'm a water sign. So I love water. And so I've always thought I want a lake house. But when I was there, I was like, oh my gosh, I actually just only want a pond. And I absolutely do not want animals. And they happen to live off a gravel road. And I was like, okay, I can't do gravel either, but I need privacy. So we're talking, you know, so I'm getting to this, you guys. (laughs) I need privacy with no neighbors, but not so much privacy where it's dark and I'm scared at night because there's no um, uh, lights, no street lights. Because my mother-in-law lives on a street with no traffic lights and it's so scary to me. And so all these things, but listen to how specific I'm getting. 
listen to how specific, right? So it might be for Jacqueline, for example, she loved that house. It might be, I love this kitchen, but I actually don't love this. So again, trying on things for size where it's not so much comparison, but it's like digging for what you want and aligning it for yourself outside of what that person is, you know, showing. So like, you know, really digging into that. So I know like my, my whole list sounds a bit crazy, but it's my kind of crazy, you know? So <laughs> she's, yesterday she's like, one of her goals for three years from now is that she really wants, uh, all season. Oh, room. All, uh, four seasons room. So there's a difference between a sunroom and a four seasons room. Four seasons room is windowed out and you, it actually is insulated and stuff like that. And I want to be able to sip coffee every morning out of my four seasons room because I don't love the outdoors, but I love looking at. A she view. also said, <laughs> <laughs> you have so much more space between your house and the houses that I'm near. So um, she's also like, and I don't go to my backyard to sit on my deck to drink my coffee because it's too close to the neighbors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the neighbors can looking at her drink look coffee. at me and I'm just like, oh, they're probably looking at me. This girl's online know? right now with like over 150 <laughs> people looking at her. She's like, do not let the neighbors watch me sip my coffee outside. <laughs> It's like you can't even relax, you know, like, oh, <laughs> so I love her. So, so much. again, getting very specific about what you want and what you don't want, you know, and I mean, there was times when I would get lost in it of like, oh, I really want this. Or I really want that, you know, and you have to kind of make your way there and kind of like pivot your way there. But a lot of it, it you get lost in comparison. Mm -hmm. That's like the number one thing because like you're not there fast enough. You're, you know, or you're, you wish you had this, or you want to be making this amount of money, or this person is this good of a mom. And this person helps her kids every day with schoolwork. Well, I'm going to tell you that I'm not like my, the best version of Mina is not the one helping my kids with schoolwork because it does not bring out the best in me. I would rather be, she can help all of you all day yeah. long, but our kids, <laughs> Lord help me. Ain't nobody got that kind of patience. <laughs> we can teach thousands of people, but our children, oh my goodness. They are not coachable as we would say. <laughs> but I all day long can do a lot of things with them, crafts or mm -hmm. even like gardening, even things like that, where it just feels like more like I'm spending time with them or even going walking or doing whatever. But schoolwork is not the thing. And you all know how much I love education. So it's just knowing about how the best version of yourself. Now I want to take it a step further, Jacqueline. Okay, let's go. Okay, so taking it a step further is thinking about your future self. What does future Mina look like? Well, I'm thinking she looks pretty darn good. She's very happy. She's got her four seasons room. She, you know... No she, neighbors looking at her. No neighbors, you know. So what that looks like for future Mina, for future Mina to be happy and what that looks like for future Jacqueline to be happy or future Erica or future, future Mindy, right? So that is just you being happy without anybody else, you know, like without having to look on Instagram and feel like crap because it's like, look at all these kids dressed the same, like, you know, or... That's my, you want to know my pet peeve is following uh, moms on Instagram <laughs> that have six kids and they're like, houses don't look messy and they're all dressed in perfect outfits and her hair is curled and they're like so happy. And the, I'm like, I, I can't, like my kids but are like, yeah. don't look at me. And the crazy thing is that when I'm not working and I have all the time in the world, it feels like, you know... And I still can't do that. It's just like... <laughs> it's too complicated to buy know, matching up. Because sometimes people are like, oh, they probably have all the time in the world. Well, if I had all the time in the world, I'm pretty sure I still could not do that. You know? <laughs> Which means that they so, don't align with us. So, but we talk about future, right? And so I think there's mm -hmm. this big disparity between people thinking something like our, like both of us have a goal of, and hopefully you all see this happen in the next few years, that both of us have a goal of a dream house. Both of us have very different dream houses. We live in different places in the, in the country, like different, you know, different things. So we both have this goal of that, which we're working towards getting because it looks like something to us, right? It's, it's whatever we want that to look like. It's how we're going to feel in the home. But like Mina, Mina was talking about even yesterday was there are certain things that you can do now that are going to make you feel a certain way to mm -hmm. get there sooner. And it's not necessarily the extrinsic thing. So she doesn't need a four seasons room to enjoy mm -hmm. her coffee. 
She like yesterday, she's like, I'm going to walk and talk and drink my coffee walking. Yeah. I can sit on my front porch and drink my coffee. You know, there's certain things that are, are things that we're doing in our lives right now that are going to get us to how we want to feel. That's not necessarily, it's like, what is it truly the thing? Right. So how does future Mina feel in that scenario? So I was like, okay, the four seasons room, I don't have it in this house and I don't want to feel like I'm living in the future. I need to, I, I want to pull myself back into what I have right now and feel that way now. It's that idea then of being able to dream. And we want you guys to get to this point of paying your bills and then being able to dream, mm -hmm. right? And then when you're able to dream, you can still dream now, but then you can kind of start to try on lives and lifestyles. You can start to try on what you want your daily life to look like. And you can go to, what do you want to feel like? And I'm going to start working on like, some meditation around this too for myself, but it's like, what do you want this to feel like? Then maybe that fear of success and that fear of failure will start to back up a little from you. And even that competitiveness, because you start to get really clear with what you need and want. Well, friends, I hope you had as much fun as we did. If you want to hang out with us live, join us every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern over at our Facebook page or Instagram. And if you want to hear the whole show, Click on the link in our show notes and we'll see you over there. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through the Product Boss Podcast. If you love our show and it has helped you in any way in your business, would you mind doing two things for us? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Reviews help other product entrepreneurs know that this is the place to be to grow their businesses and realize that they're not alone. And we know that you all know that a five-star and honest review helps you sell more products to more people. So you know that your reviews help us reach more listeners around the world. Remember, what we give is what we receive. And we are all about helping each other in the Product Boss community. We are all in this together. We would be so appreciative of you if you could take the time right now to subscribe, leave a review, and even share this episode on social or someone you know so we can impact more lives. And remember, subscribing means that you will get notified each time we release a new episode so you never miss a thing. You have helped us grow and climb into the top 10 of all marketing podcasts and together we can keep climbing. Thank you, friends. And remember, there is room at the top for all of us. This episode is brought to you by the Shop 1 in 5 Pledge and Small Business Shopping Directory. It's a commitment to make one in five of your purchases from a small business online or offline. So head to shop1in5.com to take the pledge. And friend, while you are there, check out and shop from hundreds of small businesses in the Small Business Shopping Directory. It's the go-to directory to discover, support, and shop small businesses all in one place. Head to shop1in5.com.